All right, we move on to another exciting weekend in college football. The headliner in uh, this week, Alabama, going on going down to Gainesville to take on the uh, the Gators. Uh, their biggest matchup of the year so far, and Florida's, no doubt as well. Uh, we know we know Drink will have uh, plenty to say about that one, but plenty of plenty of other ga- right. uh, good ma- uh, matchups. Um, in the uh, early in the early window at noon, you got Oklahoma playing Nebraska. Cincinnati gets their first uh, Power Five uh, challenge of the year. They'll go to Indiana. You also got Brenton, Virginia Tech, West Virginia, Michigan State, Miami. Uh, later on, Georgia Tech and Clemson you probably won't want to miss that one. There's a good there's a good one in the nightcap. ABC hooking you up with uh, Auburn and Penn State, and perhaps a little underrated matchup on the ACC network at 7:30. It's Virginia, North Carolina. Drink, what do you make of this weekend's action? Hey, first of all, I just want to give you, a, you know, I, I like how you slid in there, uh, Virginia, North Carolina. But, hey, you're not wrong about that game. But, um, you. you know, I, I would be remiss if I don't start with my boys down there in Tuscaloosa. You know what time it is. You know, we got to roll in the games, Bill. Um, first SEC game of the year. I always get nervous about the first SEC game of the year because, one, we always seem to play a team in the SEC East bracket, and it's always a team that we haven't really played at their home in quite a while. Um, we haven't been in Florida in 10 years. Uh, so um, going, going down there, um, the new cat Bryce Young, hostile environment, you know, you know, Florida, friends, top 10 team. Uh, we know they got some talent. Uh, but you see what Vegas said, 14 and a half. I, I, I think we go down there, we take care of business. I wouldn't be surprised if we beat them by 21. I'm looking at that uh, probably 34-21, uh, 30, something like that. Um, we will give up points because uh, Florida, they have talent. Um, I'm not going to disrespect them and, you know, say they don't have talent. It's just I think now Alabama, you know, Nick Saban, the, the guys he recruiting, he's funk like a – a key, like a, a blueprint on just how to perform week after week now. And um, as long as our defense play the, at the level that they're playing at, granted, you know, it's hard to tell when you we going over a, a miami theme welcome mat and then we play Mercer in week two. It's, it's kind of hard to see that. But then you, you look over at Florida, you say the same thing. They played um, Florida Atlantic week one and then South Florida week two. Yeah, all right. Cool. There's some stiff competition now. So this game will tell us a lot about both teams. And then uh, the, the game, the second game that intrigues me outside of that is Auburn. Number 22, Auburn going to number 10, Penn State. Here's the deal. I think people got to put some respect on Penn State. As much as I love my conference, SEC, whoop, whoop, you know what I'm saying, tough, you know, tougher than a $2 state. But the, the conference that we always give credit to behind the SEC is the Big Ten. And the Big Ten got some teams where we have to open our eyes. One of those teams is the, is the uh, Penn State. And here's the thing about Penn State. Penn State have a very unique home environment. We And Auburn will find out about that. Auburn, you're going there. It's going to be a wideout game. We know how Penn State get with these wideout games. We're, we're used to seeing these games when they're playing the likes of Ohio State and Michigan and Iowa. But this year you got, you know, one of the SEC hitters in here. And, and one thing I think um, – I think it's important in this game is Auburn has yet to really show a true offense that the Brian Harston offense that he's bringing from Boise State. But I'm telling you just like this, SEC fans, I, I know y'all might kill me on this one. If Auburn goes in there with some group of five trash, they getting smoked. This ain't – he can't come in here with that Boise State. Bo Nix, first of all, ain't the guy that's going to be throwing the ball all over the field. Penn State that made it pretty clear they got a defense. You're playing the game at Penn State. Vegas got them by five points. Don't go in there with that. We the SEC. We seen what Arkansas did to Texas. This ain't an Arkansas-Texas thing right here. All right? This is a whole different ball of wax here. And Penn State is for real. Auburn coming in here with a group of five coach. Um, They ain't really proved nothing yet. So let's let him prove something. But this is a big game, I think, for both conferences. The winner of this, you know, game. Even though Penn State beat Wisconsin, if you go out here and lose to Auburn, I think it will put you behind the curve when we're talking playoffs. So that, that's a game. Um, and then the, the, the last of the top top 25 matchups, um, number 19, Arizona State, uh, going against number 23, BYU. Um, 
the Pac-12 got a chance to make another, you know, ranked statement. Oregon did it last week. Now um, Arizona State can do it this week. See uh, what, what Herm Edwards and, and, and the young kid Jaden, um, the, the quarterback, see what they can do, get things cracking. We know with BYU, they, they bring the smoke usually, um, you know, once a year against a, a Power 5 team. Too bad they couldn't um, do enough to get into the, the Big 12 sweepstakes. But we'll see how they go down the road. And then a couple of, you know, top 10 teams playing, um, shall I say, mediocre, uh, you know, competition. But, you know, we got to give them a shout out. You got Oklahoma versus Nebraska. That game will be on the big noon kickoff. And then uh, you got number six, Clemson versus Georgia Tech. Listen, Clemson favored by 28, so we know how that's going to go. That's They got uh, ACC Network work all over it. Um, that game's on and ABC. Then, Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> I don't know why. That's wow. Terrible. That game got ACC Network wrote all over it. It is on that ABC. Should, that should be on the ACC Network. I completely agree. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to believe the guy that do the, the – the girl or guy that do the scheduling might be a weatherman. He's just out here just throwing stuff and make you see if he'll stick to the wall. They say, put them on the app. Put them on ABC. Hey, put them on NBC Plus. Like, yeah, just thank like – you. Thank you for saying guy or girl. I just I gotta applaud that level of inclusion. That's just tremendous. Well, here's the deal. You know, women they they out here doing just as much as us men now. So I gotta show their respect. But um, um, I got I, I got a, a a triple header for upset alerts. Here, here's the deal. Woo, woo, woo. Upset alert. The drink of wisdom <laughs> style. Uh, for my first one is South Carolina and Georgia. I know that um. Uh, South Carolina is a major underdog against Georgia. But I, I just got a feeling that at some point, this lackluster offense will get caught up. So, t- some team is going to catch Georgia slipping. And I'm not talking about a team like Alabama. I'm not talking about a team like Texas A&M. I'm not talking about like an upper echelon team. I'm talking about a team that shouldn't catch them slipping, that will catch them slipping. This is what we know about Georgia. Georgia recruits very well, but they also shrink at the biggest moment. So, um, with that said, Kirby Smart has a, a propensity for dropping the ball when he needs to not drop it. I'm not. I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised in South Carolina. The young guy Shane Beamer comes in here with his grad assistant quarterback and um, gets gets it done and upsets Georgia in in Athens. And then you got Central Michigan. Uh, I, I think they got a good chance of beating LSU. I, I don't know what's going on with LSU. LSU losing more guys this this week to injuries or whatever the case might be. Central Michigan gonna just come in there chugging along, making their little plays, you know, averaging four yards a play, and, and it's gonna be enough to squeak one over LSU. And then up to <laughs> yeah, let me tell you something, baby. Hey, LSU, if y'all lose to Central Michigan, one, I'm a, I'm gonna get a good piece of change off that. But two, it's time for Ed Orgeron to be over with. It, it's time for him to be done. Um, it might be time because I don't see where you can show me where he's gonna rekindle some flame and and make LSU great again. I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, and and, and I'm gonna tell you right now, with all the restrictions they got going to LSU games, I don't know if fans gonna be willing to go through all that boop just to go and watch their team lose to some rooted poops. So I'm just telling you right now, Lo might have to go. And then my third one is uh, Washington State over USC. I think with USC, with everything they got going on there, um, they fired Clay Hilton. Uh, they don't quite know who they want to take over the program. Um, they, you know, they just kind of in a little turmoil here. I think Washington State could come in and sneak one in. Um, they're not focused on the game all that much, so why not just come on in, get us a quick little dub and roll on out and take it back to Washington. Um, so, yeah, I got Georgia, LSU, and USC all on upset alert. You heard it here first. Yeah, the, uh, obviously the the headliner, Alabama and Florida. I haven't had a, I, I haven't been able to get a good look at either team. Um, you know, the Miami game. You know, I was on the road doing my thing on the uh, in the broadcast booth. Um, right, so I did, right. I did miss that one, and I'm I'm sorry. You know, I'm not I'm not watching I'm not watching Alabama and Mercer. I just it's just not. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see the point. You know, the only. You know, obviously when Virginia plays some clown school, you know, I'm going to tune in, you know, when they 
play the likes of William and Mary or whatever. You know, I watch, I watch them, but them, them well, your I, boys. It's much of it's Yeah, it's but I, and obviously the same with you. Like I know you'll you know you know just to like make sh- it's just like a almost like a health and comfort thing. You know, I just got to check in, make sure y'all doing all right. Okay, all right, the game's well in hand. I can go ahead and you know maybe I <laughs> tune out by the third quarter or something. But but so um, you know. Obviously, they've been, they've looked, you know, at least by the score. And obviously, you beat Miami by 31. And they, that we've been told Miami was a top 15 team or something. So, you know, you're doing right. something right. Bryce Young has looked fantastic. And just, just judging by how other, you know, so called contenders, at least in the preseason, have looked so far, Alabama looks like they might be in a league of their own once again. Uh, whether it's Ohio State already going down to Oregon, whether it's, uh, Clemson, you know, losing to Georgia, whether it's Georgia, I mean, even though they beat Clemson, you know, like, what is this offense doing? You know, we know they put up big numbers against uh, uh, UAB last week, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, we get a we get a chance to see how Oklahoma will do against Nebraska um, in the big noon setups. So that'd be something to see. Also, you know, Nebraska was, they were awful in week one against Illinois. They have won two straight games in a row, although I'm not sure they played anybody of consequence. So, Obviously, you know Scott Frost. You've been here for, you've been here for a little bit now. Um, we, we'd like to see some results at some point. So, but, but I think uh, you know Florida coming in as well. This is um, you know Florida's played with Florida Atlantic and South Florida. They've won both games by three scores. So obviously they've handled their business. But obviously, really their first big test as well. How do they stack up against Alabama? Everybody in the SEC and really in the country, they, they they're coming for Alabama. So, you know, we know Florida under Dan Mullen has been really exciting uh, offensively. They got two quarterbacks back there that can do things for you. Uh, Emory Jones and I'm I'm, I'm, sca- I'm skipping on the other guys. The other oh, guys. Uh, J- uh, Jason Richardson. Is it Jason Richardson? No, no, his last name Richardson. I don't know. I, I, I oh. blanked on his first name. Well, his they last got some name dudes. Well, they got some dudes back there, and there might be a little bit of controversy. <laughs> at that old Jacksonville correspondent has said a few things as much. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, Florida's defense, though, it, it seems like their defense hasn't been up to par lately. And if I had to guess, I think that's where Alabama's going to get them. That, that, that uh, Florida won't be able to. It's going to be hard to. I think. Alabama's defense, so you know they'll get a stop here and there when they need to. Need to as Florida's gonna Florida's defense likely will struggle against you know the well-oiled machine that is Alabama. It is on the road though, so maybe they'll hey, have some. His name is Anthony Richardson. I'm sorry. Anthony Richardson. Yeah, there he is. He's been he's been pretty electric so far in somewhat maybe limited playing time compared to Emory Jones. So we'll see how Dan Mullen manages that, you know, as we move along, but. Definitely, uh, it's it's the beginning of the SEC season for both teams, so a lot of excitement around that one. Also, the CBS music will be in place, so that's always something we can look forward to. Right. But um, you know, as far as other things that we're looking for, Cincinnati, you know, underrated matchup in the noon hour. They get their first Power Five matchup. They go on the road. They play Indiana. Remember, Indiana was uh, Iowa mopped the floor with them in Week One. But uh, we do know Indiana was very good last season. They were, you know, outside of Ohio State, they were the probably the most impressive team the Big Ten had out there. So, um, you know, we talk about Cincinnati, we talk about the group of five, you know, can a team from the group of five sneak in to the college football playoff? Obviously, you got to go undefeated. You have no margin for error at all to even get talked about, you know, to even be in the discussion. You know, we've seen that with Central Florida. We saw that with Cincinnati last year. So you got to win this one. Uh, and I think they, I think they will. The line's only three and a half, but I think they will take care of business. Any, uh, you know, moving on, you know, this Georgia Tech and Clemson. I have no idea why that's an ABC game. You know, everybody with uh, <laughs> everybody that still has, you know, only the local channel somehow they probably deserve better than that. Auburn and Penn State, though, you know, I do think, you know, Penn State already got a huge win in Week One, starting off beating Wisconsin. Now you get a chance to, you know, play against the SEC team that is in the top 25. Um, so Penn State early on, you know, they can win this game. That's our early, you know, that's a that's a little bit of a resume already. You know, it's, there ain't gonna be many teams already that have beat uh, two top 25 teams, one from the Big Ten, one from the SEC. So that's certainly something to look forward to. And as far as Auburn, 
I don't know. I don't think the expectations were, you know, tremendously high. But if you go on the road and beat Penn State, you know, that changes things. And maybe they can, maybe, maybe we look at Auburn a little bit differently if they're able to win this one. You know, other than that, Iowa State, can we get it together finally? I mean, I know it's only UNLV, but, uh, you know, you know, I'm looking at this guy, Brock Purdy. You know, this guy's numbers are, are horrible right now. You know, you've thrown for 337 and three picks, and that's in two games. What what is, what is happening? And you got a headline out here that I happen to gloss over and said, oh, the Iowa State sticking with Brock Purdy. And I'm like, well, why, what's the problem there? And then I look at, oh, no, no wonder there's a question because your numbers are below average at best. So um, obviously, you know, I think Matt Campbell, then they at least, you know, from what I'm seeing, or, you know, since he'd been at Ohio or Iowa State, it seems like they just get off the slow starts for whatever reason. They seem to get better as the season go along. I hope that's what that's what starts in this game because the Big 12 obviously needs Iowa State uh, because you have the whole Oklahoma Texas thing leaving. So they need somebody to they need somebody a big dog to step up and kind of carry the load as best they can. Iowa State, please do that. Please get on. Don't be don't flop around against UNLV. That's just. This is not going to be a good look.